guys and welcome back to my channel today we're gonna make this Christmas cake it's my own recipe so what I will do is I will link the recipe in the description down below and if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a video we are bringing videos out on everything so with that said let's jump into this video okay in here we have four ounces of chopped mixed pill next we're going to add to it four ounces of glacé cherries chopped and this is stage one we will not be baking this today but we're preparing it let me just rinse my hands off okay then we're going to want 12 ounces of this is where we're going to mix things so we want 12 ounces in total and you're going to put a mixture of dates figs apricots prunes and cranberries it's about two and a quarter ounces per one roughly what I do is I get my scales and I tip in 12 ounces and then I ch chop them up 12 ounces is a mixture of all of these so we've got eight pots Dates, cranberries, and one roughly eight ounces. Then we've got uh, figs. These are the ones that my mum dried for me from her garden. Um, so I'm going to go back. And just swing in a few more apricots till we get it up to. 12. Just a few little extra. Oh, that'll do. Bonus. So that's 12 ounces of the mixed fruit. So now we're going to cut these and put them into there. And I'm only roughly cutting. Sometimes a pair of scissors actually works better than a knife. Just a helpful tip there. Makes work a lot easier. And if you're thinking there's a lot of fruit here, yes. Yes, there is. I've spent years perfecting this recipe and this will make a lovely moist flavoursome over the years I've handed out my recipe to so many people because they've all loved the flavour of this cake yeah we have um, stone dates if you do find a stone in them, remember to pick it out. My son's just come across a couple with a stone in. Even though they're supposed to not have stones in, sometimes there are, are the odd one that gets away from them. So just be diligent when you cut them to make sure if you come across a stone like that to take it out. You don't want to break your teeth on it when you go to eat this cake. Now what I'm looking for is good colour distribution 
and that looks pretty darn good actually. Go through any bits that you think is a bit big, you want them in little bite sized pieces. The cherries we always quarter, everything else is chunked. Right now let's get on to the next lot of ingredients. Of our 12 ounces of currants and sultanas. So we've got our home dried dehydrated one. So we're going to put, I'm going to do six ounces of currants. And we've got to make this up to 12 ounces. And I've got all different colour ones in here. As you can see I've got some golden, some dark, these are homegrown. We want 12 ounces. May need to cut some of these very large ones just in half. Just if you see any large, huge, huge ones. Most of them are okay, just the odd ones that are absolutely massive. See, one like that is really too big. So just chop it in half. You could leave them as is. I like everything to be sort of similar size, but it's not compulsory. I'm going to mix this together and see how it looks. I'm going to go in if I see any big chunks that need taken down, I will. This doesn't look too bad at all. I might just add a few more cherries in. I'd like to see a few more cherries. This recipe is totally changeable. I use it as a good guide. You use what you've got or what you like. But I do suggest trying several different fruits in it. It does make a difference on flavour, but obviously don't put something in that you absolutely hate. You know, if you hate glacé cherries, don't put them in. Just put extra cranberries in. Or extra mixed pill. Right, how are we looking on that? Just add in a few, little bit more of the mixed peel. Should I just add the tub in? I'm gonna add the whole tub in. That's fine. What you could do is add all the weights together of the dry fruit. And then just Make it all out in one go until you've got got to the full amount. It'll be roughly 32 ounces of mixed dried fruit is roughly what it comes to. And in here you're going to want grated rind of an orange and a grated rind of a lemon. Okay, well, what I do is I bring you back when I've got the orange and the lemon in. Because I've got absolutely tiny lemons, I'll probably do two or three of them because they really are dinky. They're not much bigger than a golf ball. Okay, once you've got your lemon zest, and your orange zest in, we're going to go in with two tablespoons of brandy. One, two. Now, because I am not using shop bought soft fruit, as you can see, those are soft prunes, but some of my own, like my raisins and the figs, are not soft. So I'm going to just add a little bit more in than what you would do 
so it's almost three tablespoons and what you would do if you bought so uh, shop bought fruit you just stick to two tablespoons and then you would also do two tablespoons of orange juice but again because I have my own dehydrated fruit in here and it's a lot firmer and it will absorb more mixture I'm obviously going to go ahead and add more but if you've got all shop brought two tablespoons is more than enough and what I'm going to do is because of my own raisins and figs I'm going to add the whole orange in so you wouldn't need all this normally right can you stir that up and see where half looks okay because there's not much fluid at the bottom as you can see that's all I've got in and there are a lot of home dried fruit in that that I need that to absorb because I don't want hard bits within my cake so it's going to take a little bit more because mine isn't chopped brought I would have added more brandy but I'm actually out of brandy so I'm just using what we've got okay so this fruit will probably soak up that as you can see there's still not much in there but as long as everything softens up okay and what you're going to do is you're going to cover this with a tea towel and you're going to let it soak overnight okay so that's exactly what we're going to do and i will bring you back tomorrow when we add all the other ingredients and we start baking it see you tomorrow Okay, this is our fruit after it's been soaking. Look, it soaked all of that liquid up. So you can see there's absolutely nothing left, which is what we wanted. So all the fruit is nice and moist. So that has soaked literally 24 hours. Okay, we put that to one side a moment and we need eight ounces of butter right let me cut this as i go you really want room temperature butter if you can one more ounce there we are <laughs> got that much left which I'm just gonna swing in because I can't be bothered to leave that little bit to one side but it's not gonna hurt anything okay so we're gonna swing that into a bowl and then we need eight ounces of dark brown soft sugar again I've made this up myself I did this yesterday ready Okay, well I made up too much, but that's that's okay. If you don't know how to make your own brown sugar up, all it is is white sugar and molasses. Okay, we're gonna put that into there. And we're gonna cream the sugar and the butter together. Okay, there we are, that's that. And what else have I got to do? 
this is my own recipe as you can see it is an old recipe <laughs> just to prove that it is mine I'm not copying it from anywhere it's just mine right so we then got to add one tablespoon of treacle Now I haven't got treacle so I'm using molasses. You can use either molasses or treacle. So one tablespoon. I've always got molasses but it's very rare that I have treacle. So they are interchangeable. I need to beat that in. Okay, then what have we got? Okay, then we've got to add Five, five eggs and nine ounces of plain flour but we're going to alternate the eggs and flour need to weigh out nine ounces of flour I have my five eggs here so you're going to have an egg with a little bit of flour one at a time until they're all incorporated. Right. There's my other dish gone. Always, you should always crack your eggs into a separate bowl just in case one has turned. So now I'm having to be careful with egg because I have a child with me who is allergic to raw eggs okay gonna add the second egg I'm gonna keep doing this until you used all your eggs and all your flour Last egg. Last of the flour. Right. Now we've got to add in our spices. Okay, you can add one teaspoon of nutmeg. You can use the already ground nutmeg. I just prefer to use the whole nutmegs. It's one teaspoon of mixed spice, one teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of cinnamon. And it can be heaping teaspoon. I always do heaping teaspoon. We like spice probably about half a nutmeg I'm having to keep washing my hands because of obviously raw egg and my child he swells with raw egg if it touches his skin his skin swells wherever it touches so so yes it's one teaspoon mixed spice one teaspoon of nutmeg one teaspoon of cinnamon Right, and we're gonna quickly mix this in. Okay, let me get a spatula and I'm gonna scrape the sides down. Now, normally you would tip the fruit into this mixture. I'm going to have to do it the other way around because this yellow bowl is just not big enough. So, so use a smaller bowl for you. 
be your fruit. Okay. Tip that in there. This will be the bit that my kids love the most because in a minute they all get to stir it and make a wish. Right, we need our oven on. And that's at um, 140 because you're going to cook this low and slow. Get that preheated. I'll get this started on the stirring and this will make up your muscles in your arm. Now I'm going to call all the kids to come and have a stir each. I'm just going to check with the kids. No? Are you okay to be on camera? I've been on camera before. Yeah, well I thought I'd ask permission. My twins do not want to be on camera, so I'm just going to have a picture of them and you can stir it because we can't see you. I always ask my kids before I do anything. So you've got to stir and make a wish. And when you've stirred and made your wish, you can then let your brother have a go. Yeah? Stir and make a wish, and again, you can. They're not happy, he's not happy to be on camera either, which is fine. Like okay. Now, are you happy to be on camera? Yeah. yeah. I've done oh, my it daughter's before. fine on camera, so she's going to stir and make a wish. There we are. All right. Now my number third child is happy to be on camera as well. Right now, my hubby, are you happy to be on camera? Yeah, right. My hubby's happy to be on camera as well, so he's gonna start and make a wish. There we are, and I'm gonna give it a stir for my eldest who's at work or who won't get home till very late this evening. So I'll give do a stir for him make a wish for him okay now we're ready everyone's made a wish I need to clear some of these bits away okay you can grease and line or grease and flour I normally grease some flour I'm gonna tip it straight into here you can grease and line it and just grease some flour in mine And it's heavy, so get your muscles ready. I, I always make a little dip in the middle, just so it can rise. It doesn't rise an awful lot, but it tries to keep it flat then. Okay, now that goes in the oven, and depending on your oven, it can take up to three and a half hours to cook. My old cooker used to take three and a half hours. This one gets cooked a little quicker, but you'll have to keep coming and checking it. And if the top starts to brown too dark, just put some foil over it or parchment paper, something to take the heat off of the top. I don't normally have a problem if it's on nice and low. Right, let's get this in the oven. 
and I will bring you back when it's fully cooked. Okay, we're two hours in and the cake is looking really good. But I don't want it to get any darker on the top, so I'm just putting some parchment paper over it. And it's going to go back in the oven. There we are. I'll bring you back when it's actually fully cooked. It's not far off. Okay, it's been in the oven for 2 hours 40 minutes. And it is done. Alright, I am just going around at the bottom just to free it up. See if we can flip it. Oh, it's heavy. Okay. Moment of truth. Just drop the cake too. It's always handy. Right. Now. While this is still hot, I'm going to go round and I'm jabbing holes in with a skewer or a cocktail stick all over it because I'm going to class this as my first brandy up and we're going to put one to two tablespoons of brandy on the top. There we are, and we're going to leave that alone. That is the Christmas cake, and what I will do is every two to three weeks, I will put more brandy on, um, just a, a tablespoon, maybe two each time, and then come mid December. This will be classed as fully branded up and I would then start decorating it. So this is going to be part one of a two part series because this is the cake being cooked. We'll wait for that to cool. Once that cool I'm going to wrap it up very well and what I will do is I will do a second video of me decorating it. So that is absolutely brilliant. And as I said, I'll be branding it up every two to three weeks, just one to two tablespoons of brandy on it. Let it soak in. Do not wrap it up until it has fully soaked in. The brandy is fully soaked in because you'll encourage mold if it's still a little bit wet, so you'll want it to dry back out. Um, then I wrap it up in normally parchment and cling film and keep it safe and pull it out every two weeks. Um, I know I'm not a professional at decorating a cake at all, nowhere near professional, um, but I do have fun doing it. So I will bring you back in December for the second part of me decorating this cake. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because we're doing a lot of new videos and you won't want to miss the decorating one. So don't forget to hit that notification bell, that way you won't miss a video. Until next time, bye all!